Hi everyone, I'm David. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer from here in Melbourne, Australia. I've had a number of people message me after they've uh, viewed my FE lenses for weddings, so I thought I'd discuss which way I'm moving um, and what lenses now that I am still taking on my shoots for, for weddings. Uh, I do have multiple uh, shooters, so uh, sometimes these lenses are on other cameras. They might be on my assistant's camera, um, but I'll talk about the lenses that I use and I'll also share some examples of, of them actually being used so you can sort of see uh, what they look like and why I'd use that lens. Um, so I'll start out by saying I'm, I am moving more going over to primes rather than using zoom lenses. I have still got those zoom lenses but I'm tending to shoot more and more with just the primes. I'm finding that I'm just using my feet to zoom rather than having the zoom built into the lens. Um, and I'm finding the quality of the primes is just so much better uh, and I really enjoy using them. Um, so I'm shifting more that way. Um, so the lenses that I'm mostly using now, I tend to go for the bridal shots at the beginning of the day when we go into the, the house doing all of the shots of the flowers, uh, the dress, uh, things like that. And the lens that I'm mostly using for that now is the FE 35 1.4. I adore this lens. Um, the out of uh, focus, the bokeh is just gorgeous and the out of focus is, is beautiful as well. Uh, so it does give that lovely separation. Um, it, it's really, really good. Like I said, it does go down to 1.4. Um, it also has the declick, so if I'm using this for video, I can declick it so that you won't hear the clicks um, from the aperture, but um, it's just great. This probably is on my lens probably around 70% of the time now. Uh, as in the bridal uh, house in the morning. Um, it, it's just fantastic. Uh, it, as you can see from the results that I've shown you, it gives a, it's very, very sharp. Um, and like, like I said, I love the out of focus range. So this is what I tend to use an awful lot during the early morning parts of the day. Uh, when I move to um, things like doing the bride up close, um, I will start to then use the baddest. Um, this is an amazing portrait lens. So if I'm doing anything where the face is really involved, like fairly close, I do want that nice compression of the face that you get with this. Um, so I'll tend to put the Battis on. Again, it's a 1.8 lens. It's really, really small too, which is why I tend to like using all of these primes. Uh, the 35 has still got a decent size and weight to it, but the Battis is really, really quite light. Uh, if you take the lens hood off, it's really quite small. Um, but this is great. This is the portrait lens that I use uh, for all of the bride formals, the bridal formals. Um, I will uh, discuss later on when we're going for the more formal shots, what lenses I use. But um, yeah, this is great for those headshots that I've shown. Um, if I want to go wide, I'll tend to use the 16 to 35. So I am still using the um, this zoom lens. So I'll show examples of that too, so that you can see where I will go nice and wide. Um, but I love this lens too for it, it does give a, a, a nice wide outlook in, in a closed room uh, and it is also sharp as well. It does go to f4 but to be honest the f4 lenses aren't bothering me at all because the ISO on my cameras is so high now that it doesn't matter if I, if I raise the ISO up. Um, so I'm really quite happy with the f4 lenses. Um, yeah. Uh, now for the ring shots and things like that and getting close up to the flowers, I am still using this Sony. Uh, it's the 30mm um, 30, 30 and it's a 3.5 macro. It is an APS-C lens, uh, but I'm finding it, it's ample for what I need to do. So there's no way I'm going to go to the 90 or anything like that. Um, I have got the 90, but I don't use it. I really like this because it's so small to take and it's great. It fits on my cameras easily, just throws in my camera bag. And the results, really, I'm amazed. Uh, so this is a, an amazing lens to do all your macro work. Um, I don't tend to use a 70 to 200. I'll, I'll use that later on and I'll, I'll explain where I tend to use that more, uh, is in more in the formal type shots. So they're the lenses that I'll use. So if we're talking about doing the bridal shots in the morning, basically all I'm using is the, and it's also when I go and do the groom, is the 35. I'm using the Battis and the 16 uh, to 35. And I'm also using the macro lens. So they're the four lenses that I'm now taking when I do the bride in the morning or the groom in the morning. Um, once we get to the reception, um, I'm then starting to use uh, 
some different lenses. I tend to like the uh, 16 to 35 because I like a, a nice wide shot. And then my second shooter is tending to shoot with the 70 to 200. So she's roaming around and um, she's shooting with a 70 to 200. I actually still really love this lens. I won't be getting the 2.8 version. Um, I'm just really happy with how this performs and I like its weight. Um, it is only f4, but to be honest, most of the time when I'm zooming in, it's it's ample. Um, yeah, so the ceremony, basically, I'm just using these two lenses. I'm just using the 70 to 200 and the 16 to 35. Sometimes I might also use a second camera and I'll have 35 on it. Um, so they're the lenses that I'll use for that. Now, once we've done that, when we're starting to do the formal shots at the end of the day, I will always have a camera with a 70 to 200 because I like the compression where it brings the backgrounds in. Um, so I'll always be tending to use uh, this 70 to 200. If there's just headshots, I'll switch to the baddest. If it gets nice and tight, I'll switch to that. Or if I want that nice subject isolation, um, I'll start to go back to the baddest again. Um, but mostly I'll have the 70 to 200 on. Uh, and again, I'll bring in some wide shots using the 16 to 35. Um, if I want that nice vista and bring in the, the wide shots for that. Uh, so they're the main lenses that I'll tend to use for that. Um, with the video side of it, I'm tending to use just this. So I'm sticking just now with the uh, 18 to 105 and I'm putting this on my uh, A6300. Sometimes I'll even put it on the A7R Mark II um, and, because it shoots in uh, Super 35 mode anyway. Um, this is an amazing lens. It's fantastic for video. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, the only other lens that I'm tending to still use a lot is this uh, 10 to 18. I'll stick that on my A7S because I'll often use this on the gimbal. And it's it's a fantastic, nice wide lens. And it's very, very light uh, to stick on a gimbal. That's why I'll be keeping this uh, A7S because uh, it is such a small, nice camera. Um, so I will use that, and sometimes if I have to do group shots, which are uh, the crowd after the wedding, sometimes the 16 to 35 is not wide enough, so I can go and put this on my other full frame cameras, and you can shoot it actually at 12 without it showing any um, of the black uh, bars that show around the outside. So you do get around about 12 to 16, so it will go wider than my 16 to 35. Uh, again, that's an f4 lens. Um, yeah, so that's basically now what I'm using. So this now is my kit that I'll take. I have still got the 24 to 70, but I don't really use it anymore. Um, I have still got it though. Um, and I did have the 28 uh, to 75, I think they are, or 28 to 70, I can't remember the full size. Um, I've sold that lens, uh, so I won't be using it um, anymore. Um, so if you have any questions, um, please leave them down below. Hopefully you'll give me a thumbs up and I'll get back to you if you have any uh, things that you want to talk about and um, so share some of your experiences as well. Um, and that's it for now. So I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.